So I was watching an old Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode the other day, Teenagers from Outer Space. It's a Joel episode from 1992, the um, fourth season, I believe. It's a silly film in which teenage aliens come from outer space and turn a dog and some people into skeletons and whatever. Anyway, the thing is, I noticed this guy. I've seen this guy before. He, he, was, he was in Ed Wood movies. And I asked myself, hey, who is this guy? Well, hello there, old man Kelly here. Jeff to my friends, and you can call me Jeff. So that's the curse of being me. I can't watch anything without thinking about the actors involved, especially those not-so-famous thespians who pop up here and there. I see a face and I ask myself, what's the deal with that guy? I need to know. So this guy's name is, or was, Harvey B. Dunn. He's dead now. Now his acting career doesn't seem all that impressive. I mean, he has 45 credits on IMDb, but most of them are listed as uncredited or, or parts such as Sleepy Man or The Elderly Man. Now I wonder, was this the type of man who was working hard to have a serious acting career, but it just uh, never seemed to take off? Or was acting a lark, you know, a hobby, something he stumbled into? Something to do after football season had ended, but baseball season was still months away. Now, on everybody's favorite news source, Wikipedia, I learned that Harvey was born on August 19th, 1894, and he died on February 21st, 1968. He was an American television and film actor. He was known as the man with the missing finger because, well, he was missing a finger. Apparently, this became his trademark. He said the loss of his finger happened in 1908 when he was 13. He said it was caught in a cogwheel of a printing press. Ow. But that's all Wikipedia had to offer. On Fandango, I found out that Harvey B. Dunn led a long and successful performing career as a radio announcer and stage, television, and movie character actor. It said that he was Southern by birth, that his earliest professional engagements were as an announcer on WALB Radio in Albany, Georgia, and WFLB in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Later based in Chicago, his theater work included roles in the front page. He played in stock across the country and appeared as a dramatic actor on Colgate Theater on early television. Now I looked at Tom Graff's website. Tom is the man who wrote and directed the Teenagers from Outer Space. He died in 1970, so how he has a website, I don't know, but it said there that Harvey was born in South Dakota in 1894. A performer of all trades, he acted in straight theater in Chicago for a number of years before heading out to California. While Dunn found work mostly as an extra in studio pictures like Sabrina, he also starred or co-starred in a number of low-budget features, including Ed Wood's Bride of the Monster. It was in this film that Dunn showcased his trained parrot, an apparent sidekick of his in a side career of entertaining at children's parties. So the parrot wasn't Ed Wood's idea, huh? And then there was this New York Times article from January 7th, 1946. At the time, according to the article, he was acting in a play for the USO in Manila. It said that he was a stocky, mild-eyed, pleasant voice man, very gentle and well-liked by the other cast members of the cast in the USO show Three Men on a Horse. Harvey has sung in male quartets, acted in repertoire and stock companies, and Chautauqua shows, traveled from one end of the country to the other as a chalk talk cartoonist and magician, and handled a fair laundry business in Gainesville, Florida. By the way, I looked up the word Chautauqua, and according to Marion Webster, it was any of the various traveling shows and local assemblies that flourished in the U.S. in the late 19th and early 20th century that provided popular education combined with entertainment in the form of lectures, concerts, and plays, and that were modeled after activities at the Chautauqua Institution of Western New York. So it would seem that Harvey was a lifelong entertainer. He was in television, movies, theater, and worked as a magician who did children's parties, so way to go, Harvey. Now on to IMDb. His first credit was in a 1950 TV show called The Ruggles. Oh, uh, Meet our sponsor, would you please? Uh, Mr. Lewis. Mr. Uh, how do you do? How do you do?
do you lucky people. Our sponsor, Mr. Lewis. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, one and all. After many small TV roles, he finally landed a part in Billy Wilder's classic film, Sabrina, in 1954. Playing along such notables as Humphrey Bogart, Audrey Hepburn, and William Holden. He played a party guest with Trey, and he had no lines, but hey, how many people can say they were directed by both Ed Wood and Billy Wilder? His next big break came when he was cast as Captain Robbins in Ed Wood's Bride of the Monster in 1955. The next year, after a bunch of small roles, he was cast in the juicy role of Gramps Morgan in Teenagers from Outer Space. from very far away. He did, huh? Well, maybe he doesn't like to talk about where he's from. With the looks of his outfit, I'd say he's raised in a private school of some sort. He followed that up right away with another Ed Wood masterpiece, Night of the Ghouls. He was also in Ed Wood's The Sinister Urge. I own a small business a short way from here. Now with the taxes on that business getting higher and higher every day, and add to that every kind of tax you can think of, federal, state, and city, it comes to a pretty high figure. Now my tax money pays your salary. His last credit was 1965 when he played the Admiral in Bob Hope Presents the Chrysler Theater. So why did he retire? Well, he was 71 years old, so maybe he thought, it's time. After all, when you've been acting for 15 years and the best role you are offered is an extra in My Fair Lady, maybe you start to wonder about your career choice. He died just three years later, so it might have been a health thing. In the book Ed Wood, Mad Genius, a critical study of his films, it says that he died of cirrhosis of the liver. Now, cirrhosis of the liver can be caused by alcohol abuse, and I'm not saying that Harvey had a problem, but you never know. Yet I can't help wonder he can't have made a lot of money as an actor, so how is he able to survive for 15 years in Hollywood? Perhaps that's one of the questions I'll never know the answer. You know what else I don't know? Was he ever married? Did he have kids? Or any type of a life partner? I have no idea. This is all I could find about Harry B. Dunn. I would love to know more. If you know more, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, this is Old Man Kelly. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with something else, you know. You never know what I, I'm going to have on this channel, so bye-bye.